Hey, Jonathan here. I've got a question from Matt who asks, is it possible to sell a new startup on value? I'm helping a client bring a new web software to market, but there's no existing financial figures to anchor against. It's all speculation. Do you base the price on projections? All right, I get this question all the time uh, because for some reason I have lots of people who like working with startups. And as Matt brings up, it's very difficult to work with any kind of business that's relatively new. Um, I tend to use the word immature, but I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying that they're new businesses. So they don't know, a lot of times they don't know uh, what leading indicators will result in uh, lagging indicators that are beneficial. So what does that mean? That means that, hey, if they want to increase the bottom line, they don't know which lever to move to do so. So it's hard to say, you know, if you are a marketing person, for example, and say, well, uh, I, I understand that you want to increase your sales. Uh, I'm a marketing person. I don't do sales, but I can increase the number of conversions on your website for sure. I'm confident that I can do that. I see that you have lots of traffic. I see that it's your conversion rate is horrible and I can see why. So based on just my, my expertise in this space, I'm highly confident that I can dramatically improve your conversions for people who are signing up for you know free trials, let's say, of your SaaS product. I am confident that I can increase the number of signups for free trials on your SaaS product. Whether or not that turns into sales, I have no control over. So I can't guarantee that. But if you know, dear SaaS founder, that if you can increase the number of free trials, that you have some conversion rate to paid customers, that's say 20%, and you're confident that you can uh, maintain that, so all you really need to do is get more free trials, then having more free trials is a leading indicator to uh, the next level down, which is the sales, let's say. And then after that, there would be churn and reactivation and those things. So if you said uh, to a SaaS startup, well, I can increase the number of uh, free trial conversions or, or free trials to a startup who's like, well, we don't even have a website up yet. Then it's like, well, okay, I, I don't, I'm not confident that I can deliver any kind of result to you. What kind of result would you like to have? And maybe they would say something like, well, doing the, the reverse math, we know that we need to have this many sales and we're going to guess that we could have this many conversions uh, to paid from free. So if we could get a thousand free trials per month, then that, that would probably be good. Like we, we'd be cool with that. Now there's a lot of guesswork going on here. And a lot of times in my experience, people at startups don't want to think like this. Uh, they're just not interested in it's just like no just do whatever you every all hands on deck do everything you possibly can work every possible hour to do everything at the same time and hopefully at some point we'll have enough eyeballs that Google will be interested in buying us to me that's kind of like offering services to like somebody playing craps in Las Vegas they don't want to talk about all the interim things. They're just like picturing the home run. They're picturing the like lottery win. So just like do everybody do everything always and hopefully something will stick. To me, that's, that's not useful. It's not somebody I want to get uh, involved with. So um, I probably wouldn't. So let me look back at the question. Okay, so yeah, so in this particular case, helping a client bring new web software to market, but there's no existing financial figures to anchor against. Okay, so to bring it back to, to what the example I gave, if you can walk them back to a metric that you believe you can control, then I think you're onto something. But still, it's really hard to do with immature businesses because they don't know which levers to move for sure. It's a world of difference when you're working with somebody who's been in business for 10 years and they've got a regular flow, they've got a pipeline or they've got a funnel and they can see at every single point, tweaking this number is gonna result in a benefit farther down the chain or tweaking that is gonna help over here. It's just like a miraculous <laughs> difference between the two. But if you can find some sort of leading indicator that you are confident that you can control, and in your case that might be something like, uh, let's say Matt's a developer who's building a SaaS that they want to bring, that this, this um, company wants to bring to market. 
I would be like, well, you know, are they bootstrapped? Are they, do they have investors? Who are you trying to please? If you have investors, are you trying to please the investors? Are you trying to please potential buyers? Are you trying to just maximize the number of users signed up? Are you trying to create a hockey stick? What are you trying to do? If they can't answer that, I'm gone. If they can't answer that, then I'm like, okay, you've got something that's, that you've got your eye on, maybe a multiple things, but you've got at least one thing that you've got your eye on. What do you, I'm not gonna put words in their mouth, what do you, dear potential client, think, think will affect that outcome in a positive way? And you know, what are the things involved? Is it traffic to your site? Is it you know, general awareness? Is it SEO? Is it uh, a feature set? Is it a marketing page? Is it a, um, a community that's related to the application? Wh whatever it is, whatever things that they have, and when, when you see one that you believe you can affect confidently, you know, you see the current state of affairs and it's abysmal, let's just say, and you're like, oh yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely do this, no problem. So then you're like, okay, what is the value of that piece of the puzzle? It's just one part of this giant assembly line that may or may not result in an acquisition in three years. What's this particular part of the assembly line that I do believe I can control worth to this buyer at this time? And the only person who can tell you that is the buyer. So you need to talk to them about, well, how much do you think this will affect the outcome? What are you trying to, what are you hoping to achieve? What would be a best case scenario? What would be a home run? Uh, what are the percentages between my piece of the assembly line and the next most important piece or the last most important piece? So there's just tons and tons of guesswork when you're working with a company who doesn't have any kind of history. It's just tons of guesswork. So what can you do um, other than other than trying to um, define all of the things between A and B? Honestly, your choices are work with somebody who's not like that. Go somewhere else. Um, package up your expertise in a way that is either a productized service or a product that they can kind of pick off the shelf and you can scale across lots and lots of startups. And it isn't just you doing customized one off work every single time. Uh, and another thing you can do is just price yourself really high and make a case for your price. So maybe they are maybe they're very immature in their business experience. They're, it's just new for them. And you're like, you know, and you just set a price that you suspect is probably double or, or even more than anybody else they're talking to. You say, well, it'd be $50,000 for me to do this. And they're like, ah, 50,000, that's crazy. Everybody else is estimating like 15 or 20,000. And you say, well, it should work out like this. And you kind of do what I would call a cold read on their business. So if you have a lot of experience with startups, you could do a cold read and say, well, if I do this thing, I've done it a bunch of times in the past, and typically what happens is it's awesome. And then the next stage is they get a second round of funding. And the second round of funding is usually between five and $20 million. So $50,000 seems like a really small amount of money to pay for this relatively high level of certainty that I can deliver my piece in an awesome way that will then lead to the next piece. So what this requires is you to be really experienced. And of course, there's a chicken and egg problem here. But if you're looking for that kind of thing and you can measure your past successes in some way that has numbers attached to it, because numbers are the language of business that is relevant to this particular buyer, then you could actually close that deal and you can make a good case for the price and you can actually deliver the kind of satisfaction that, that you're looking to deliver. Um, so if all of this sounds confusing and hard, it's because it is. Working with startups on a value basis is super hard for the reasons I've outlined here. And probably an easier approach, perhaps not as profitable, but certainly an easier approach is to come up with products or productized services that you can sell at a fixed price to lots of these kinds of customers instead of doing these one-off custom projects every time. All right, hope that helps. Uh, if you have a question, hashtag AskJonathan on the internet and we'll find it and try to answer as soon as possible. See ya.